How do you not get lost when you have a lot of bars in one and they all start to look the same? This might seem like an odd question, but there are cases where the music uh, is repeating and repeating and repeating. And at some point, if you don't keep count of where you are, you might find yourself in trouble. So either you keep your head in the score all the time, which is a big no-no for me, or you memorize it. Now, you can't, you can, yes, uh, memorize it in, in one, 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 but that can prove quite difficult. And, you know, it uh, can take a, a little bit of a distraction and uh, your counting goes down the window. Moreover, you're not really showing anything interesting or particular to the players. How can you solve this in an elegant way? Hello everyone, my name is Gianna Argelio, I'm a conductor and composer. If this is your first time on the channel, this channel is all about classical music conducting and conducting technique in particular. If you have any comments or questions, just write them down here and I will do my best to answer them in one of the next videos. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell so you will get reminded every time a new video comes out. And now let's keep going. By now you know that I always start from the score and never from a dry exercise. For this particular video, I chose a bit from the last movement of Borjak's Serenade for strings. Starting from here, we are at part 134 and following. This is all conducted in one. So you could do para pa pa pira pa pa pira pa pa pira pa pa pira pa pa pira. However, you're going to go all the way to bar 169 and 169, 170 with this. You need a way to structure your conducting for your own sake, actually, and also, of course, for the players, so you can be clear on uh, the musical structure. How do you do this? Well, simply put, you group bars into patterns. Starting from bar 134, we can identify a four-bar phrase, then another four-bar phrase, then look at the viola part. We have a three-bar phrase, then four, then two, three, four, and so forth. Understanding these patterns gives you quite a few advantages. One, of course, this is part of score analysis, so it helps you understand the structure of the music and with it where the music is going and how you can shape it. Second, it gives you an indication of how you can conduct it. Instead of conducting all of it in one, para pa pa pira pi pa pira pi for 20 bars and then some for 30 bars and then some, you can actually show the grouping of uh, the bars in patterns. Tira pa pa pira pa pa pira pa pa pira pa pa. And then you have another four pattern and then you have a three, para pa pa para pa pa para pa. And then four again following the viola part. Then you have your violins, your first violins entrance. Now, in your mind, when you memorize this, you memorize the music, but you can also memorize the structure and it helps knowing that you have a sequence of four bars plus four bars plus three bars plus four bars and then you have a cue to the set to the first balance. You have two patterns, two bars, then three, then four, and then you have another cue because you can bring in the violas. And then after four bars, you'll have another cue uh, for the for the second violence who've been waiting there for quite some time. So you better not miss that one. All of this to say that you can leverage what the music is to make your conducting clear, but also to facilitate your work when you memorize the score and when you get to these to these kind of uh, passages. This is a very useful trick or a useful technique, if you prefer, that I use all the time because it really helps me in uh, uh, memorizing the structure, memorizing things and keeping things in a certain order in my head, actually. And then the movements are a consequence uh, of, uh, of this structure. This is yet another example of when you can use a pattern in a meaningful way. Of course, do keep in mind everything else that's attached to the score, like the dynamics or the articulation. For instance, if it's just one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you know, one, one, one if it's staccato, or you can make it more of a legato stroke, or depending on uh, the um, dynamic, it's smaller or it's a little bigger of a gesture, and so forth. 
Nevertheless, this is a perfect example of when a pattern can have a very meaningful application. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more uh, in-depth analysis or technical tips and technical articles, head over to my website in the next year in the next Conducting Pills episode. In the meantime, please continue to enjoy music, enjoy conducting, and be kind to yourself. Ciao!